Hi, it's Alvin. Welcome to the Making It Big Season 3 Marathon. Got a lot of fun episodes in this video for you guys, and I thought I'd give you guys some insider tips, some fun facts about each episode to look forward to. Exciting news is that Season 4 is coming out soon. We have a lot of fun stuff, a lot of collabs, a lot of great guests, some people that you may recognize, some people that you might know from other channels. So I'm excited for the season. Thank you guys for the support and excited to show you guys what we made. So starting off with the giant cheesecake, there is a moment in the video where you can see me pouring all that batter. When we get to that part, it was so heavy that one time <laughs> to actually get it in, I actually had to cut, get some help because the batter was so heavy and thick that it would barely make it into the container and I was so scared that it was going to spill that I don't want to risk it so big thank you to the culinary team but yeah watch out for the part where pouring the batter because that part is really tricky. Welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big the show where we make giant versions of some of America's most beloved foods. We're in a different time different place different circumstances but Tasty's love for giant food hasn't changed so today we are going to be making a giant cheesecake. Why? I like cheesecake. Enough talking, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is the crust. I have 120 graham crackers, and then I'm going to process it. And there we go. I like graham crackers a lot. Okay, let's go crush some. That's nice. All right. One batch down, 10,000 more to go. All right, I think we're done. It's like sand. Thank you for your hard work today. You've been of great service. Back to the equipment room with you. Oh shit. Now it's time to melt seven sticks of butter. <laughs> barely fits in the pot. Oops. I've been babysitting this butter quite a while now. I don't even want to think about how many calories are in here. So let me know in the comments. Mm. Some sugar, probably a lot of sugar, <laughs> and some salt. Oh my God, it smells so good, Jesus. This looks like a beach when the wave just went away and your sandcastle got destroyed because you weren't paying attention. And then your mom says it's time to go home. But you don't want to go home. I don't know where I was going with that. Found a little oven safe kind of box. There's a real name for this. I don't know what it's called, so I'm gonna call it a white box. Found a really big tray. This is the biggest tray that we have in the entire Tasty Kitchen. As you can see, we have lasagna noodles, molasses. I am going to try and create a foil wall reminiscent of the foil wall I made in a 100 layer lasagna video I made a while back. I dropped out of engineering school, so let's see if I can still do this. It's actually true. Okay, hold on. Ugh. Oh boy. And this goes down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six by four. Ooh, that's thick. The molasses is basically an edible glue. One, a two, three, four, five, six. A little break. Four. Okay, hope this works. Hold over the edges. Where are you? Good catch, Alvin. To make sure that the cheesecake doesn't stick, I'm gonna line this with parchment paper. Ooh. Call me Bob Ross. Like that. Ooh. That's half. I'm gonna make another half. Oh boy, please don't break. Ugh. Hold on. One second. Oh, there we go. Okay. Looks like that 75% of an engineering degree is starting to show because this structure is 75% complete and 75% stable. Okay, we're just gonna do that. And then I'm gonna use this to smooth it out. ASMR. This is 
just like a Zen garden, but you can eat it. This is taking a little longer than I expected. This crust is done, nice and compact. Time to go bake this big boy. Oh, please fit. It's gonna bake for, until it's ready. So, until then, I think it's time to make the batter. Okay, we have a lot of stuff on the table. So the first thing that we're gonna do is dump in a lot of cream cheese. Everything on the table may seem like a lot of stuff. The thing is, this is only a quarter of the batter ingredients. This bowl is the biggest bowl we have, and this is the maximum amount of batter that we can make at any given time. Oh yeah, there we go. I wanna be here for a while. Whew. Okay, it's like a cream cheese landscape. Up next, sour cream and heavy cream. We're back at it. Don't spill cream everywhere, Alvin. That would be bad. Getting a little bit of a workout doing all this. Straight down the sides. Flowers next. Don't go everywhere. Okay. Last, the eggs. Bloop, 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 bloop. A little bit of vanilla and lemon zest. It's time to go further beyond maximum speed. I can smell burning coming from the machine. I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be left on this long. All right, I think this is pretty much done. Batter is nice and smooth. Oh, I have to do three more of these? Oh my God. The crust is done. Oh wow, it smells so good. Ooh, some of the molasses even dripped down and caramelized. That's really pretty. Let's bring this back carefully. Oh boy, let's get you down there. Whew. It has been a very long time in the back kitchen. I had some culinary help. We have 20 liters of cheesecake batter. I just wanna to read to you guys the recipe. There are 10 cups of sugar, 50 tablespoons of butter, 320 ounces of cream cheese, which is 40 Philadelphia blocks, five cups of heavy cream, 10 cups of sour cream, three cups of flour, pinch of culture salt, 10 teaspoons of vanilla extract, 40 eggs, and the zest of four lemons. Now, as my dad used to say, that's a lot of stuff. Ooh, that was satisfying. I'm having so much fun. That's like one whole cheesecake just went in right there. I think this recipe is like 10 or 15 times an actual cheesecake. All right, you know what, let's <laughs> just dump it. Ooh, now that's nice. Get in there. All right. Nothing happened. That was definitely not one of the walls breaking. Oh my God. Okay. Lift with your legs, not your back. Yeah. <laughs> don't break, don't break, don't break. I can hear the wall straining under the weight. Oh sh It's spilling. All right, it's spilling a little bit in the back, so I'm going to evacuate it as fast as I can. I'm gonna call for some backup. Okay, so I put this guy on a cart, being very careful not to do anything bad to it. The tricky part is gonna be how to get this guy into the oven. Hip, may I request some assistance? Absolutely. Okay. Hip is one of the people that makes this show happen. All right, on three, we're gonna lift. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Sweet. Okay, wow, amazing. Holy moly, that was hard. Thanks, Hip. No problem. Okay, so this guy's gonna bake for probably like four hours. Goodbye, dude. So to make the glaze for the strawberry topping, we'll start with some cornstarch. Ooh, this is some nice cranberry and strawberry juice. It helps thicken the glaze. And the rest of the juice goes in here and with some sugar. Okay, the juice is boiling. Gonna slowly add this cornstarch thing. And then you gotta stir constantly. Ooh, oh, that got thick mega quick. I'ma turn you off, wow. It transformed into like a gel in like three seconds. Look at that. And then, to give it some extra shine, a little bit of corn syrup. I know it's not the best thing in the world, but hey, it makes things shiny. 
So we have a little bit more strawberries and a lot more glaze. The one we started with, thanks to some help and work with the culinary team in the back. I don't know how many pints it is. It was like a lot. Oh, that one for me. Please stay. No. Stop dropping food on the floor, you dummy. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need all of it. I do wanna glaze these nicely. Slowly, gently. Hello, this is the big cheesecake. As you can see, he's been chilling, resting. Let's see what we got. That's a big boy. You can't even move it. Let's trim this guy. Ooh, this is a very soft and tender cheesecake. That is one nice cross section. Stay. <laughs> Cover up all the cracks. Holy shit, that looks dope on the wide angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wild. All right, I think this is it. This is the giant cheesecake with a strawberry topping. It is probably 50 to 60 pounds at this point, but I'm very happy. I have a friend, her name is Hannah. She really likes cheesecake. I think it'll be fun to FaceTime her and see what she thinks of this. Hi, Alvin, how are you? Good, yeah, we're on set. You are someone who has made a lot of cheesecake videos on Tasty. I remember every time we'd have meetings with the team, we refer to Hannah as like the cheesecake queen. There's not a single day that goes by that I don't want to eat cheesecake, so. Today, we made, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna show you. So excited, oh my gosh. One, two, three. <gasps> Alvin! Holy moly. <gasps> Alvin, it's gorgeous. Well, I'm glad you like it. How many packages of cream cheese? I have to know. You know those Philadelphia ones, right? The eight ounce yeah. ones? We use 40 of them. <laughs> Every time I think you're like done surprising me, you come up with something else. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Cheesecake queen approved. That's what we wanted. <laughs> wow, it's bending the knife. All right. Look at that. Yeah, this cheesecake probably feeds a family of four in the finish. Some piping art. Ta-da! The one slice of the cheesecake. Time to eat. Ooh, that's nice. Whoa. It almost tastes better than the regular cheesecakes I make. Soft, fluffy, crust is nice. Very happy <laughs> with this result. So you guys are probably wondering at this point, what is going to happen with all of this cheesecake? I really wanted to share this and give this to my friends and people that I admire, just like I normally would, but in current circumstances, that really isn't possible. So if you excuse me, I have a lot of cheesecake to consume. That's really good. Next up is the mac and cheese. So for this episode, one of the most interesting parts is when we make the pasta noodles. And when we make the pasta noodles, we made so many that it took me and the culinary team two full days to freshly make all those bow ties. So when you see those big bow tie custom pastas on screen, just let you know that we worked really hard to make those and that took forever. There is smoke coming out of the KitchenAid. I'm getting a little bit of a workout here. <laughs> So fun. Like cutting into a dough pillow. Oh, okay. Hey guys, I'm Alvin. Welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big, where we make huge versions of some of America's most beloved foods. Things have changed a little bit. We're in a different time, different place, different circumstances, but one thing that hasn't changed is Tasty's love for giant foods. Today, we are gonna be making a huge mac and cheese. Why? I love mac and cheese, I love the pasta, I love the amount of cheese that goes into it. I think it's delicious and I think it's gonna be really fun just to make a giant version of it. So, let's get started. Okay, so for mac and cheese, the first thing I wanna do is make fresh pasta. All right, I have my uh, trusty friend here. I'm gonna go in with, maybe I should have put it in the bowl first, but that's okay. <coughs> and about 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of eggs. Bloop, 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 bloop. And some salt. And instead of doing this all by hand, like a true pasta maker would, I'm gonna use the power of technology with my friend Todd here. Oh, that spill flour everywhere yet. Todd's just gonna do his thing for the next five, 10 minutes or so, and uh, hopefully he doesn't get too tired out, but I'm just gonna sit back and wash while he does all the work. So see you guys in a little bit. There's smoke coming out of the KitchenAid. I don't know if you can tell, but I think it might have overworked Todd a little too hard. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You've done good today. Served your purpose. We could take it to the, the, the KitchenAid graveyard. Sad music plays. Pour one out for the homie Todd. I would say Todd probably got me 80, 90% of the way there. It's up to me to carry the burden to finish the rest. This looked kind of not as smooth as I would have liked, but to be honest, guys, I'm kind of weak right now. I haven't gone to the gym in a very long time. I'm just gonna let this rest. Hopefully the resting relaxes the dough. All right, we're gonna get you in here. Good job, dude. Time for this guy to take a nap. Okay, so I made two more doughs while the first one is resting. All right, you've had a nap. Come out now. Woo, shape him up a little bit. Okay, I wanna cut this guy into eight pieces, so that's four and then two. Good math, Alvin. Ooh, that's satisfying. It's like cutting into a dough pillow. This will be over here. It's like a scone, <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right, let's get this guy into a rough shape for the pasta machine. The table is shaking, that's okay. I'm gonna roll it in this pasta machine just to make sure that we're good. And the handle came out, that's fine. Can we go in already? Yes, we can. Come on, you can do it, yeah. Not bad for one. We're gonna do one more. I was thinking of making a couple of fun pasta shapes. And she's a ruler, seven inches by four inches should be good. The handle really just doesn't like being in the pasta machine today. Give it a nice flare. Now it's looking good. Okay, so I'm actually gonna make little bow ties. I don't know, I really like the bow tie shape. Ta-da, little bow tie, or big bow tie, I guess. I'm gonna keep making these bow ties for a while until I have a lot. Excuse me while I spend some private time making this pasta. Okay, pasta is all done. Uh, time to make the cheese sauce. First, we're gonna start with four sticks of butter. A lot of butter. This is gonna be kind of like, not really a bechamel, but a cheese sauce that involves making a roux first. So, I'm gonna get this butter melted. That might take a while. Okay, so the butter is melted. Time for the flour. Woo, that's a lot of flour. Usually, you know, roux like one tablespoon of flour to one tablespoon of butter. We put like four sticks of butter. That's 32 times what a usual amount for this kind of thing would be. I think it's time to season this. So we have garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, mustard powder, salt, and some paprika. Season your stuff, kids. Makes a big difference. Add some milk. Oh, that's a spill. You gotta whisk really hard. No lumps. I'm getting a little bit of a workout here. Oh, okay, it's getting thick, more milk. I don't think I've ever made <laughs> this much sauce before. It's kind of cool. And the funny thing is that this isn't even all the sauce. I'm gonna have to do this again because this is the biggest pot that we could cook it in. So the actual amount of sauce is going to be double what we have here. Final batch. Please fit. Okay. There's a lot of sauce. It's gonna take a long time to cook. So I'm gonna put a lid on it and I'm just gonna let this guy hang out and cook with the lid cracked. See you in a bit. Please cook. Okay, it's been a while and it's been boiling and it got really thick and nice, which is fantastic. And now, probably one of my favorite parts about making cheese sauce is the cheese. So I'm gonna take this off the heat. Shredded cheddar, a lot of it. I wanna take this slow. <laughs> it smells amazing. <laughs> Let's get the rest of it in there. Please be enough room. Cheese, you melt, right? Once you melt, all the volume disappears. <laughs> That's how science works, right? Wow, this is wild. I'm gonna go back to the whisk. Slow and steady wins the race, is what a loser would say. But in this case, we are correct. I think we are pretty much there. I do wanna taste it though. That's so good. <laughs> we'll be right back. 
we're gonna go cook some noodles. Okay, so we are back in the Tasty Kitchen and we have a huge pot of water boiling. All of our bow ties have been made, have been drying over here, so I think it's time to give them a nice little hot tub. Boop. You go in, make sure you don't stick to the bottom. I'll put on one of these, go to the prom, go to a wedding. It's pretty good. I'll see you guys in a bit while I babysit these big bow ties. Okay, so these guys have been in for about 10 minutes now. I think it's time to come out. So we're gonna put them in some cold water. Make sure they don't stick to each other and dry out. Here's guy number one. Oop. They've maintained the bow tie structure, which makes me really happy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to get out of here soon. My right arm might fall off. Whew. All right, I have a whole lot more pasta to cook, so I'll be standing here switching between my arms so they don't fall off. And after that, I think it's gonna be time to build the mac and cheese. So excuse me, I have some bow ties to cook. Okay, so I think we're ready to assemble. A ton of pasta, lots and lots of cheese. I think this is like 10 liters of a cheese sauce. And I think the best way to go about this is to probably layer it. To first start off, I'm gonna get some of this cheese sauce and lay it down. No questions about it. The cheesiest thing I have ever done. I'm gonna layer down some noodles. One, two, this might take a while. Okay, and then some more cheese sauce. Let's get rid of this dude first. Some cheddar. <laughs> it's so fun! And then a little bit of mats. Oh, and then another layer of pasta. Okay, let's do some more cheese. Colby Jack, this guy. Go in there. Put some more of this mats. Let's do some Gouda. I feel like a kid in a candy store. It's pretty good. Okay, next layer. I got some on my neck. Hold on. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> then we will do some Gruyere. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of cheese. And the rest of the Gouda. This is so much cheese. This is the size of the one that we made. And this is the size of a regular bow tie. It's probably like 20 times the size. Let's knock out the cheddar on this layer, huh? Actually, I'll save some of you for the top. Okay, I think this might be the final layer. Wow, there's still a lot of stuff in there. The last bit, cheesy, saucy goodness. Smooth it out, fill those cracks. And last but not least, some fresh mozzarella for that nice cheesiness. I might have put too much cheese. Or maybe there's no such thing, you know? Put some browning on top. Last bit of cheddar. I think that's it. <laughs> I don't really know how heavy this is. Okay, I wanna put this on a cart and we're gonna go bake this. All right, come on little dude. It's time to go in the oven. I feel like I'm dragging my kid to school. I don't have any kids, but if I did, this is how I would drag them. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Let's get you into the oven, little boy. Oh, that sounded weird. Oh, oh boy, woohoo! All right. Wow, it's like bending the rack. Okay. Goodbye, dude. See this guy? probably bake for at least an hour or so but yeah the cheese is getting really melty as you can see and to make sure that this cheese gets a nice and bubbly top we're going to broil it I'll babysit it and make sure that it doesn't burn and we'll see how it goes oh boy oh wow this is <laughs> this looks amazing oh, this is a big one School's over, I'm dragging my kid back home. Come on, little guy. Let's go. So we're back, the cheese is here. It smells amazing, and to finish, I'm gonna garnish with a sprinkle of chives. Whoa, that makes it look very expensive. Also adds a nice sort of oniony taste to the cheese, which will be really good. Wow, <sighs> okay, this is the moment of the truth, the big, big cheese pull. There's no time like now for a cheese pull. Alvinzo 2020. Oh man, oh man. Look at this beautiful deliciousness. You ready for it? I think it's, it's a little hot. Okay, let's go with the ladle. Screw this little spoon. <laughs> this is gonna be a huge scoop. <laughs> oh yeah. All 
All right, let's give myself some mac and cheese. Ooh. Okay, I <laughs> think that's pretty good. Finish it off one more time. I'm really excited to eat this. I think it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm just gonna eat, so you guys don't have to watch me do that. Oh man, that's so good. Oh my God. It's creamy, it's cheesy, super seasoned well. Wow, I'm gonna eat a lot of this. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering what's gonna happen with all this mac and cheese. To be honest, I would have loved to share this with friends and other people because I just like feeding them food. Unfortunately, that's just not something I can do right now. And I'm just really glad that I'm not lactose intolerant. So if excuse me, I have a lot of mac and cheese to consume. Now I'm Boba. This is probably my favorite episode of the season. The scariest part was when I was pouring all the boba in and all that liquid was so hot. The glass was steaming up and I needed to put milk and ice inside of it because that's how boba is. But I was so scared. There were like 15 people watching that if I poured that ice in too quick, the whole thing was going to shatter. It was going to break. So at the last moment in my head, I was like, no, I'm not putting ice because if I put ice in, that would have shattered. It would have been a bad time. And if you're really <laughs> careful, you can see how nervous I am during those moments. We tried to cut it out, but yeah, I was mortified. So well, look out for that part because I was freaking out. Hi, I'm Alvin. Welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big, where we make giant versions of some of America's most beloved foods. Today, I'm going to be making a giant boba milk tea drink, but the thing is, I've never made boba from scratch, so I'm going to call my friend Inka. She was my co-host on the Giant Ramen episode, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So enough talking, let's get started. What's up, Inka? How's it going, Alvin? Good. We are using your boba recipe today to make a giant boba. I'm gonna get started. So first thing is the, the sugar in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, stir it until it gets dissolved, right? Yep. Wait, what heat should I be cooking this on? Basically just enough for the sugar to melt. You oh, don't want it to be on high heat. Do you have it on high heat? Yeah, that was on high heat. Yikes. Yeah, basically once it's warm, you wanna remove it from the heat actually. Oh, remove and then it, add okay. the starch. Sorry, table. <laughs> Is that one tablespoonful? That's a lot. That's like a little bit. Less. Let's, okay, so like that? I, yeah, sure. All right, she said it. So if the recipe goes wrong, it's not my fault. You know, I can only see so much from the Zoom. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's 100% my fault. As you're stirring it, right, it, it should form into like almost like a paste. That's great. Once it's all dissolved, you want to return it to the heat and now you just cook it down until it's slightly thick. Okay, return to the heat. Wow. It's like three ingredients, but the amount of like technique is quite a lot. I think it's getting kind of thick now. The rest of the starch goes in and then stir fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's getting sticky. <laughs> oh boy. Is it like really lumpy? It's like really hard to scrape off the bottom of the pan, yo. How do I know when to get it out? You're supposed to get it out like ASAP. But... Oh, okay, ASAP, all right. So far, things are going bad. Dude, that's really liquidy. It's your recipe, yo. But can you work with this, do you think? Like, I think so. I can't feel it, so. Yeah, I mean, it feels like Oh God, okay, it looks really weird right now, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this texture. Uh, 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 it's a little sticky and it's kind of warm. What the heck? It's kind of like alive. The moment you set it down, it like does its yeah. own thing. But when you yeah. try to move it, it's like a rock. Wait, okay, then I think there's something wrong. What's wrong? It's not supposed to be like a, a rock. Yo, I don't think that's right. When you're putting the starch in it, remember how like for you, it was just like a liquid? It's yeah. supposed to be like a dough at that point already. Yeah. No, like it comes right off, right? That's not right. When you pull it, it should be stretchy at this point. Stretchy? I think we have to redo it, Alvin. Oh no. It's 100% my fault. It's okay, it's only a few ingredients. It'll be okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, attempt number two. You were saying that I messed up in the sauce, like the thick sauce stage. We think that's what it is, that you need to get it to a consistency of a thick mochi sauce, and hopefully that's the problem. Thick mochi sauce, thick mochi sauce, thick mochi sauce. Can you see this? Is that almost there, right? No, it's not. Oh, keep going. Ah, that's where. That was the issue. I think the first time I didn't make the thick mochi sauce. It was just sauce. 
Oh, yeah, I think it's good. Are you 100% sure? I'll take the blame. You can. <laughs> I'm like 85%, 80%. Oh, that's a B. We, can, we don't. 75? Okay, let's add the start. Okay, off heat, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you worried? Oh, 100%. Let's go for it. Okay, she said go for it. <sighs> Please work. Does it feel different? Oh, it feels so different. Oh my God. Like Amazing. nothing's really getting stuck. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. So now what you have to do is roll it out a little bit into like an oval shape. Divide it into three sections. Okay. You need to wrap plastic around two of the doughs. This is just to help retain its moisture and heat. Okay. Eat. What's next? What's next? Roll this one out into like a long snake shape until it's like roughly around... 0.5. You have a ruler with you? Yeah, I do. 0.5 is actually still too big. It should be a little smaller. Like a finger? Like a finger! Okay. Yeah, look at that. Little ball. Oh, that looks so nice! Yes, looks great. Looks All right, beautiful. Let's go. Boba has a pretty unique texture when cooked. How do you describe what it tastes like or feels like? Well, the taste is faintly sweet, but the texture is QQ. QQ. So QQ is the term that people in Taiwan use to describe the texture when it's kind of chewy, it has a slight bounce to it, but it's not rubbery. I feel like there's a misconception there. Mochi is kind of QQ, you know, like it's that kind of a situation. And QQ is my favorite word to describe everything. Noodles can also be QQ when they're cooked right. I have currently rolled only this much? Yay! Oh my God. Thanks, Inka, for helping me. Good luck, Alvin. I'm sorry I can't be there to help. I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm gonna be here for like hours, dude, Jesus. Okay, we're back in the Tasty Kitchen with a huge pot of boiling water for the tea. These are black tea bags. These are the ones that I use and I use to make and sell bubble milk tea. I'll tell you guys that story later, but essentially you would just take these tea bags and drop it in. And we have 500 tea bags. Sounds like a lot. That's because it is. I think this might have enough caffeine to keep an elephant going for a very, very long time. All right, so this is all the tea. It's been chilled, it's been brewed. As you can tell, the color is super intense. It gets like 22 liters or so. I don't know how many cups of boba that's gonna make, but I think the answer is a lot. Ooh, okay. After many hours and some culinary assistance, we were able to make a lot of fresh boba. Four trays, probably like a thousand of these little ones. All right, in we go. Ooh, they're like little, little bullets. Oh wow, this is really hot. Woo wee. All right, let's give these a stir. One more, here we go. Oh, this is burning. Don't kill yourself, Alvin. Come on, that was pretty intense. In Inca's recipe, the goal is to cook these until the bobos rise to the surface. Goodbye, you little boba balls. Ooh, whoa, all these little bobas, they're nice and plump. So I'm going to take these guys directly into some ice water. Inka said this step is really important because it sort of shocks the outside of the boba and helps to give it that QQ texture that she was talking about. They look really good. And they can't stay in the ice water for too long. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. Okay. I have a lot of little boba balls to cook, so see you guys in a bit. Pretty important part about boba, at least for me, is if it has like a nice brown sugar syrup. And to start, five cups of water into this giant pot. Woo. And seven and a half cups of dark brown sugar. Stir this until everything comes together. You sort of have this syrupy brown sugar that's really nice and it coats the outside of the cup and they kind of make this streaky pattern. Probably my favorite part is gonna be cooking the boba in it. So here we go. Stir until it gets nice and sticky and sugary and delicious. Oh my God, it smells, oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> I do want to taste one. Oh, oh, that's good. All right, I'm gonna let this cool down and then we're gonna go build the boba drink. Woohoo! Okay, so I found a vase that's apparently supposed to be used in hotel lobbies around the world as my boba glass. It is 10 inches by 30 inches tall, which in mathematical sense means it's very big. No, Alvin, there's no pressure. You just can't do it again if you mess it up. Let's first get the boba in. Oh my God, there is a huge... 
don't break. There is a huge vertical distance that this is gonna have to travel. Probably gonna spill everywhere, but that's okay. This is really hot. Oh wow, it's like steaming the glass up. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't gotta use the sound for that, right? We could just, we could, we could skip past that part, that's fine. My dream was to have the whole thing 100% fresh boba, but I unfortunately don't have the manpower and miscalculated a lot of this. So I asked our culinary team to get some of the fast quick boba. I still wanted it to have the look of a real boba milk tea. So in this boba, there is a mix. It's not all fresh, but I still think it's gonna taste great. So please don't be too mean to me in the comments, but that's what we ended up doing. At the shops, they kind of get the brown sugar drizzle going down the sides. Kind of want to emulate that. So we're gonna, that's a spill. We're gonna do this. We. Wow, this sound is really something else, huh? Okay, it looks kind of cool. I'm pretty into it. Oh, I was gonna tell you guys a story about how I used to sell boba back in the day. I was a junior high school kid. After lunch, we'd always go get boba, so I thought I could make a lot of money by also doing it. So I dropped out of Chinese school, much to the dismay of my mother. Figured out how to make boba at home. Went to Costco, got the big cups. The recipe was exactly the same as this tea. I set up a little table outside a classroom. When the bell rang, the kids came out. I sold it for $2.50 without boba, $3 with boba. The kids would buy it. Made a couple hundred dollars that summer. When I ran out of boba, my mom would actually stay at home to cook the boba and drive over a couple of batches whenever I ran out. But in return, she asked for 50% of all proceeds. I was like, mom, that's a lot of money. And she was like, Alvin, I'm just trying to teach you. This is how life works. She told me that she was actually gonna save the 50% and put it in my bank account later. I never saw that money ever in my life again. She denies all allegations and has no recollections of the final amount of money I had. If you're watching mom, all my money back, yo. You can't make milk tea without milk. So, thanks cows. Ooh, look at that. Dang. Well, that was pretty cool. <laughs> this is bigger than my wildest dreams. Please hold, don't break. Mm. So uh, couldn't find a straw that was big enough on Amazon, so I ended up ordering a clear PVC pipe. I think this is the only thing that will be usable for this boba. I'll be very careful with this, but here we go. Get in there. Oh, it went to the bottom. Now we are going to slowly stir. Is it moving? I can't tell. Whew, this is actually really hard. Oh my god, this camera is pissing me off up here. <laughs> Slow. This is wild. Oh my god, my shoulders are so tired. <sighs> okay, I think that's all the stirring I can do. Wow, this is the complete finish thing. This is a lot of bubble. I don't even know how much this weighs. I'm gonna have to do some math later, but I do want my friend Inka to see the final result, so I'm gonna give her a call and just show her what we got. What's up? How's it going? You want to see the giant boba that we made? Yes, show Ooh. me. All right, one, two, three. Oh my God, wait, is that a straw? It's a PVC pipe. Oh my God, this is insane. That's so much tea and so much boba. Yeah, it's uh, six gallons of milk, uh, 22 liters of black tea. This is crazy, I love it. <laughs> Congratulations, you did it, you made it. A giant boba tea. I mean, this is your recipe, just times 500 probably. Enjoy. All right, bye Inka. Mmm, wow. This tastes really good. I think this is definitely something you could serve at a boba shop and people would buy it. So you guys are probably wondering what's gonna happen with all that boba. I would have loved to share it with my friends, people that I like to feed, just because that's something I like to do with this show. But unfortunately, that's just not something I'm able to do right now. So if excuse me, I have a lot of things to drink. <laughs> I had a lot of fun today and I hope you guys had fun watching. So I'll see you guys next time. So chicken parm stuffed garlic bread. This is actually one of my classic tasty videos I made a long time ago. Fun fact, when I supersized it, I had to re-watch my video three times because I forgot how I actually did it in the initial video, which sounds weird because I was the one that made the initial tasty video, but flashing back, looking at that video, I was like, 
man, I've changed a lot since then and I'm pretty happy that things are now for the better and just very excited for this episode. A lot of fun callbacks and references, but yeah, it really got me thinking to the time when uh, I was making old TS2 videos. So yeah, enjoy the episode. Will you come out? He's having a hard time letting go. It kind of feels like I'm making mochi. Get ready for the burial. Listen. Hey, I'm Alvin. Welcome back to Tasty's Making a Big, the show where I make giant versions of some of America's most beloved foods. And fun fact, this year is Tasty's fifth anniversary. It's been five years since we've started this crazy food adventure. And to celebrate, I'm gonna be making a giant chicken parmesan stuffed garlic bread, which is a video that I made a while back. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, so to start, I'm going to make the giant garlic bread from scratch, and that means making fresh bread. As you guys can see, this is a starter. He's been starting for 24 hours now. Usually people name their starter. I think I might get too emotionally attached if I do, so I'm just going to... He's gonna just nameless here. And to start off, I'm going to mix the yeast with the water. Yeast needs time to get bubbly and it'll do its thing over there. And into this big bowl, I got the flour and some salt. I'm just gonna mix this guy up. He's getting gassy. Okay, let's cut this guy open. Oh, that smell is definitely something. Come on, get out of your little box. Look at that. All right. Can you come out like this? Will you come out? Oh, he's coming out. He's having a hard time letting go. That's okay. We all do sometimes. All right, this guy's all done. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix this with the flour. You know what? I'm just gonna use my hands for a little bit. Ooh, <laughs> this is quite soft. It kind of feels like I'm making mochi. The goal is to get kind of a shaggy dough. Ooh, getting flour everywhere. I think this guy's pretty much ready to go in. All oh, that yeast, Ooh, look at those bubbles. Start to get that incorporated. This might take me a while. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so it's like kind of coming together. It's just it's like a sticky, shaggy mass. And because this is Tasty's fifth birthday episode, I thought I might share a couple stories from what it was like, you know, being here since the beginning. So fun fact, this chicken parmesan garlic bread video, I made it a long time ago and it was actually just me in here on like a Sunday night. I was like, ah, this is just another Tasty video. And then I just made it, didn't think much of it. It did pretty well. And now I guess I realized all my best ideas come to me on the weekends when I'm not working. Is that weird or is that normal? I think this is kind of there. This is gonna be kind of messy. Are you gonna come out? Please come out. Okay, that's probably could have done a better job of that. This is not too far away from the course. I feel a little bit better about that now. It's very sticky, you know? I think I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna wrap saran wrap around this, let it proof for 45 minutes and clean up this entire table because I am a mess. <laughs> oh look, Tasty's fifth birthday. Whoa. So this guy has been proofing for like 45 minutes. It's time to punch some of the air out, which is always pretty fun because I like punching things. Oh, uh, I'm not aggressive, <laughs> I promise. At this stage, the top is ugly, so this is the fold step. So back to more reminiscing about Tasty. We started to explore more cinematic videos on YouTube, and one of the ones that I've been most proud to work on is a video called The Magic of Bread Making, where this uh, French baker, Goose, owns a little bakery in Brooklyn called Le Primerie, and I remember editing the sequence where he was folding the dough. And I remember that being some of the most satisfying shots I've ever seen. Even though I'm not as good as he is, this part definitely rem reminds me of him. Go check it out. So once you got all those ugly little bits kind of shambled together, you get to go underneath and flip the whole thing. The big baby. Woo! Look at that. Now that he has been folded and shaped a little bit better, it's like a butt. Very firm. Went to the. Never mind. Um, go to sleep, dude. Okay, so while the bread finishes proofing, I'm going to fry the chicken. In the original video, it's a chicken breast that is, you know, cut up into small pieces, breaded, and then fried. Since we're making it big, we're not going to cut up the chicken. We're going to use the whole chicken breast. Salt, some pepper, 
but you can't just put only salt and pepper on chicken. Come on, guys. Like um, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika. Seasoned chicken should basically be a different color. Fill all of those crevices. There you go. See, now the chicken doesn't look like chicken anymore. That's when you know it's been seasoned correctly. Trying to get all the seasoning off of the pan. The chicken has been properly seasoned, so we're breading it with the flour, the eggs, and the breadcrumb. Pretty classic setup, just like we did in the original Tasty video. Shake off the excess flour into the egg. Same with you. And we'll flip into the breadcrumbs. And we're gonna cover it completely. Make sure that we can get all the good parts covered. Let's put them over here to rest while I'll do the other dude. Get ready for the burial. This reminds me of the time my friends buried me in the sand one time at the beach. And then they forgot about me. All right, Alan, be careful. Ooh -wee. I think I little put a little too much, but that's fine. If you're at home, don't do what I just did. Be a little safer. Don't put into it at the same time. I got a little excited, but you don't want the oil to be too close to the top. The goal is just to get a good looking shell on the top. It's a little crispy. That's all good. Nice. And drain over here. And this guy and drain over here. I'm gonna bread and fry the other two. These aren't fully cooked. The outside is. So once I finish frying all four of these, I'm gonna put them in the oven just to finish cooking all the way through. Excuse me, I have some more chicken to fry. <laughs> So this guy has been proofing for another 45 minutes and he has gotten quite large. I'm gonna do the whoosh. Oh, that was less dramatic than I thought. Oh baby, look at that. Woohoo! Okay, let's press into it. Get all those little bubbles out. Wow, you can hear the gas coming out. And then fold the top third over down and then seal it. And the bottom third over seal to make sure that this gets a nice oblong shape. I'm gonna repeat that. Kind of like a nice Yule log. Just kidding, I don't know how Yule logs are made. So we're gonna go and roll. And it's very fun to play with. Kind of reminds me of the giant donut episode that I did for making it big. That was not that great, but that's okay. This is a very large reptile. This is the biggest bread we can make because this is the biggest tray that can fit in the oven that we have. So I'm gonna let this guy proof for another 45 minutes till he gets bigger one last time. And then he's gonna go into the oven. So grow up my dude. Okay, so the chicken's all cooked and you can't have garlic bread without garlic butter. So I'm just gonna make a lot of garlic butter, which we'll start with with butter. Who knew? The amount of times I've made garlic butter for a tasty video is probably in upwards of like 50. Back in the day when I was coming up with a lot of these recipe video ideas, I would almost have this weird spreadsheet thing where I had a column of like popular food items and terms like garlic butter, chicken, uh, steak, mozzarella sticks, onion rings, all those things. And on the other side, I would have another 20 and I would almost play this mix and match game where I would like try to combine two random phrases to see if they work. Chicken Parmesan and garlic bread actually came out of those two. Okay. So the butter is frothing. Time for the garlic, just to get the aromas going. I've made this so many times, but it always smells amazing. Oh man. All right, so I'm gonna take this guy off the heat. Yeah, I don't wanna get too much color on it because we're still gonna put it in the oven later. I'm gonna add some parsley. This is the good old tasty garlic butter recipe. Okay, so I think the bread looks pretty much ready. So I think it's time to roll out and bake this giant loaf of bread for this garlic bread. So that way this garlic butter has a home. So, wow, smells amazing. This is the final look of the bread before he goes into the oven. I'm gonna score the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna bring him to the oven. Let's go. Come on, vamanos. Everybody, let's go. He's a heavy boy. Oh, hey, look, he jiggle too. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Ugh. Sparta. All right, and here you go, big buddy. All right. Goodbye, dude. See you until you are big again. Okay, so this is how the bread came out. It is a beautiful looking and smelling loaf. I'm very proud of it. He grew up to become a very fine bread boy. Ooh. There, a little buddy. In the original video, the normal size bread is cut into sections and hollowed out, so I'm going to be doing that, but on a very large scale. There's a scene in Ratatouille where Chef Colette says, you can tell a loaf of bread is good, not by the smell, but by the sound. Hopefully this bread is good. 
Oh yeah, that's a good bread. Listen. Music to my ears. Sorry, I had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> and the next step is to hollow it out, just like in the video to make room for the chicken. There really is nothing quite like freshly baked bread. Ooh, that's hot. Look at that. It's wow, this is steamy. You can see, that's one. I'm watching you. That's kind of scary, don't do that. Oh, this bread is so good. Oh, it smells amazing. Uh, I want to do these for the rest of these pieces. I'll be right back. Okay, so all of these have been hollowed out, you can tell. And I'm going to start the chicken stuffing process. Putting a whole chicken breast in here. So let's see how we're gonna do this. And just start stacking. Wow, this is gonna be one tasty meal. You see all those gaps? That's gotta be filled with the cheese. Let's do another one. Let's trim off a little bit. That's fine. Please fit. That's a tight fit. Yeah, vertical might be the way to go. Some cheese in there. Yep. Okay, so every single one of these pieces has been stuffed with chicken and cheese. And just like the video, the last part is to transfer them onto a tray and brush them with garlic butter. To seal the ends, we got the tips. Make sure all the little cracks and crevices. Wrap them up. And this guy is ready for the oven. And this is where all the magic is gonna happen. So off you go. Okay, here we go. Let's take this guy out. Let's see. How are you doing, big guy? Woo! This is the good stuff. Okay, come on. Woo! Nice. And we have uh, some nice marinara sauce here to go with the garlic bread. And just for you guys, a nice big old cheese pull. Oh, hello there. That's nice. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to eat. All right, look at this beautiful guy. That is quite large. I have to knife and fork this guy. Oh, that's crispy. Oh my God, it smells so good. Jeez, I'm not even kidding. A little bit of sauce. Mmm. Whoa, it tastes better than the video of it I made a while ago. That's crazy. I'm gonna keep eating this. <laughs> Please excuse me for a moment. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering what's gonna happen with all this garlic bread and all this chicken. And honestly, you know, I wanted to be able to share this with friends and people that I like to feed, but unfortunately that can't happen this time. So if you excuse me, I have a lot of garlic bread and chicken to consume. So I will see you guys <laughs> next time. Yay! Cut the video. Okay, giant hot dog. So for this episode, the funniest part was finding that big giant hot dog casing because we were looking at it. We Googled a salami wrapper. We Googled the hot dog wrapper. We, there was nothing that big. And then we had to like find a company that made giant mortadella and go onto their restaurant shipping site and find the specific largest sort by most expensive casing that we could find. It was like 50 bucks for this big red casing. So when we see how we made the hot dog and how we encased it, just just say finding that thing was very difficult, but I'm glad we did. Hello, I'm Alvin. Welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big, the show where I make giant versions of some of America's most beloved foods. Today, I'm going to be making a huge hot dog. How are we gonna do it? I'm not so sure yet, but we're gonna find out right now. <laughs> Okay, so you can't make a hot dog without making a, hold on, <laughs> stop. So you can't make a hot dog without making a hot dog. So we're gonna make a hot dog. We have a KitchenAid mixer with a meat grinder attachment. All the parts have been frozen to keep everything nice and chilled. If it warms up, things start to stick, get messy, and that's not good. Over here, I have a lot of chuck, which is a nice cut of beef with a lot of fat and flavor. I've never made a giant hot dog before, let alone a regular hot dog. So I'm gonna make a hot dog. Make sure that this doesn't get stuck. I'm gonna do one piece at a time. And you go. Where'd you go, dude? I put him in, but he's not coming out. So we gotta put in another one. Uh, come on, man. Slowly. Oh, I can hear this guy working really hard. If you remember, my friend Todd here from the Mac and Cheese episode had a little bit of a medical accident where smoke was coming out. <laughs> Since then, he's spent a long time in the ER and he might be sent back to the hospital in a little bit. 
Alright, now it's slowly working. Whoa, 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 calm down now. So I figured out that grinding that beef would have taken us probably like two days with that you know, old machine. So I went out to the store, got some ground beef. The butchers are way better than I am at doing that kind of stuff because, you know, as a wise poet once said, ain't nobody got time for that. Grinding isn't enough. Hot dogs are smooth, they're not burgers. That requires some additional processing. Oh yeah. Woo, look at this guy. And to turn the mixture into more of a smooth emulsified paste, I'm adding a little bit of ice water to help it maintain its structure. Mmm, delicious. I want to say this batch is done for now. Let's see what we got. Wow, that really is fresh hot dog stuff. Oh, that smell is something else. I woo wee. I would have processed the second batch and you know, y'all don't need any more details about that. I want to do that and you guys just, just chill out for a couple seconds. There are certain seasonings that make hot dogs taste like hot dogs. So we have salt, sugar, garlic and onion powder, dry marjoram, dry coriander, smoked paprika, sweet paprika, white pepper, mustard powder, mace, the spice, not the self-defense weapon. And last, sodium nitrate, which is a curing salt that gives the hot dog its signature pink red color after it's cooked. Oh boy, this is a lot of seasoning. The one thing I will say is that it now smells a lot better. So this meat mixture has now been completely seasoned. We have a large sausage casing that we purchased from the Bologna company. So I have a strong hunch that they know what they're doing. In order for us to make a hot dog with it, it does need to hydrate a little bit. So I'm putting it in warm water so it can become nice and stretchy and flexible so we can put the meat inside of it. And this will take about uh, 30 minutes. This is really weird. It's like a giant chili pepper. How do you open this guy? Like, like, no. The goal is to get all of this meat inside this casing. This is gonna be a very weird process. Hold on. This kind of feels like when you're filling up a pastry bag for like piping frosting. So let's just think of it that way. Oh, no, get, you better not. Oh my God, I swear to God, dude. Are you kidding me? You are kidding me. Good thing this table is clean. Okay, so this is what it looks like when all that meat uh, was put in the casing. I'm gonna need to tie it, so I wanna get a nice twist going on. Let's see if I can tie this guy. Okay, I think it's time to cook it. Good job, dude. We have a nice water bath to help it cook slowly and gently. If I had kids, this is how I would lay them to sleep. Not, not in a water bath, that's, 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 that's bad. All right, come on, dude. Oh boy. Come on, in you go. This guy's in the oven. He's gonna cook for around two hours to slowly, slowly cook it through in the water bath. And then we'll check back. So our friend Todd is back to make the hot dog bun from scratch. So to start, I'm combining some warm milk, some sugar, and the yeast, so that the yeast has plenty of food. This is a recipe that is directly from Joshua Weissman. He has some great stuff on YouTube, so be sure to check him out, because his recipes are really good. All right, oh, and I spilled classic Alvin, okay. This is gonna chill out until it starts to get nice and bubbly. Into the mixer, I'm adding some bread flour. Don't spill, yeah, I spilled, okay. Get in there. And some salt. Just gonna incorporate this a little bit. Todd has seen some stuff. It took me a while to coax him back out to come back out for another round, but we're gonna get every ounce of power out of this guy before he needs to go to the scrap yard. That's kind of dark. Okay, so the yeast has grown up a little bit, as you can see. This is pretty much ready to go. It's coming together. To make this dough even richer and nicer, I have two eggs and two egg yolks that I'm just gonna add. Todd, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to kick it up a notch for you. Todd's pissed. Let's make the dough extra soft, supple, and rich. I'm gonna go slowly with a couple of tablespoons of butter. This is where the real battle begins. Hang in there, I got four more tablespoons of butter coming. I can't give out on them quite yet. You've got this. Keep going. Never give up. Okay, I think the dough is done. Whew. All right, 
Take a long rest, buddy. Whee. Nice. I'm gonna shape this guy into a nice pillowy ball. This dough feels so nice. Oh my God. So it's been 45 minutes since this bread has been resting. He's grown quite a lot, as you can see. And this dough has so many air bubbles. It's so light, it's super fluffy. So I'm gonna punch it down. Wow, that's fun. Look at all that gluten development. That's what I'd like to see. Come on, come on. Look at that. I'm trying to shape it into a hot dog bun shape. So I'm, again, sort of tucking and rolling. Kind of looks like a baby. I don't want to name you though, because probably get attached and then I have to like cut you in half for the hot dog. I won't name you, I'll just call you baby. Okay, let's put you in your little foil crib. I don't know how to hold children. Ugh. That's not how you should treat children at all. So this is gonna proof for another 45 minutes or so before it bakes and then right before it bakes, I'm gonna brush some egg on top of it to give it some really nice color. Into the oven you go, big dude. Goodbye. Ooh. The hot dog's been cooked in that water bath and cooled. Ooh, <laughs> that was fun. That was like in kindergarten. Look at that. It smells really good, like a really, really seasoned beef thing. To get the really nice color it deserves, we're gonna help it by making a little bit of a glaze. I'm gonna put in some barbecue sauce, some ketchup, and a little bit of oil. Let's brush this dude. Time to paint. Nice. I'm Bob Ross. I'm currently painting with a deep shade of hot dog red. There are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. I'm very bad at art, but I can brush hot dogs over soft buns any day. I'm gonna put this into an oven so that the glaze can sort of caramelize and cook and bind with the sausage, and I will be right back. Big boy. Okay, we have a wonderful hot dog-esque giant tray that was made by our art team. I think it's fantastic, and this is what we're gonna serve the hot dog in. First things first, let's get the bun in there. All we're gonna do is we're gonna split the bun down the middle. Don't mess this up, Alvin. Slow and steady. Okay, how am I gonna get you all the way in there? Guess we just gotta go for it. Do -do -do. Houston, we have landed. That's not what they say, right? Houston, we usually they say Houston, we have a problem, but there are no problems in Houston. I mean, New York. <laughs> Can't have a hot dog without ketchup and mustard. Let's draw some squiggles. Woo! I think that's okay. So, oh sh Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I think it did it. Yeah, it looks like a DNA helix, but that's okay. I think this is a giant hot dog. I'm very happy with it. It's pretty heavy. I want to say like 20 pounds. This hot dog is the size and weight of at least 80 hot dogs. It looks pretty good. <laughs> Time to eat it. Oh, it's really soft and tender. Whoa, ho, ho, look at that. Wow, look at that color. This is my portion. A nice sausage meat patty with two nice bread croutons. Mmm, that's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It still tastes like a hot dog, but it's like a fancy sausage meatball thing. To be fair, everything here was made from scratch. There's none of those preservatives, those artificial flavorings. Maybe that's why it didn't taste as nostalgic, but I will say, pretty darn good hot dog. So you guys are probably wondering what's gonna happen to the rest of this. I would have personally loved to share this with friends because that's something I like to do, but unfortunately, I can't do that right now. So me and this hot dog are gonna spend some really good quality time together, and I will see you guys next time. It's just you and me, dude. Last but not least, the giant chocolate chip cookie. This is a riff on my personal chocolate chip cookie recipe. And I knew from the moment that I did this episode, I was like, Alvin, you're gonna be Santa. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know why, but you're gonna be Santa. So I asked our production coordinator to run over to Michael's, see if she could find a hat, see if she could find a beard. She was great, she found it in 10 minutes. Cut back, was like, Alvin, I got your hat, I got your beard, I put it on, and well, ho, ho, ho. It's gonna be a very Merry Christmas. Wow, this is so fun. I feel rich. 
Don't spill, Alvin. Don't spill this one. Genius. If I do say so myself. It's only stupid if it doesn't work. Hello, I'm Alvin. Welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big, the show where I make giant versions of some of America's most beloved foods. So today, I'm going to be making a huge chocolate chip cookie. Let's get started. Okay, so uh, the first thing to making great cookies is a lot of butter. As you can see, this is 10 sticks of butter. So this recipe is a scaled up version of one of my older tasty recipes of cookies. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brown the butter. One, two, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and this is going to take a while to melt down. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna melt this butter for a little bit. Wow, this is so fun. I feel rich. Oh, some of the little flavor brown bits are starting to come up to the surface. That's a good sign. Okay, so I've turned off the heat and I think this is beautiful. It's like liquid gold. Okay, so this guy's gonna go off the heat and it's time to make the rest of the dough. So now it's time to make the dough. I found the largest bowl that we could find in the Tasty Kitchen and yeah. Let's make some cookies. First, I have a lot of brown sugar, a lot of white sugar. For a lot of flavor, I like to add a lot of salt. Let's just give this a mix, break up all that brown sugar. So this recipe is 10 times the size of the normal batch of cookie dough, which makes about like 12 cookies. So this is gonna be one very, very large cookie. Okay, oh, wrong way. Now that it's cooled off a bit, my favorite part. Brown butter. Oh, it smells ridiculous. And back in. Look at that. One of the biggest reasons why I really like making cookies, it's literally because of this part where I get to smell the brown butter and the sugar. If there's a candle that smelled like this, I would spend a lot of money. A lot of eggs. Bloop, 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 bloop. And quite a lot of vanilla extract. Here we go. Coming together. It's a good workout, you know. All right. The texture we want is these beautiful, silky, gold ribbons. Time for the dry ingredients. 10 cups of flour, <laughs> a lot of baking soda. And back in we go. Slow this time. Don't spill, Alvin. Don't spill this one. Just do one of these. Yeah, that'll mix it in real good. Genius. If I do say so myself. It's only stupid if it doesn't work. This mixer really does have a mind of its own. Okay. I think the dough part is ready, but can't have chocolate chip cookies without the chocolate. So I'm gonna go get lots and lots of chocolate. Be right back. Okay, so I brought a lot of chocolate. I like to use both milk and dark chocolate. I'll start with the milk chocolate first. I'm going to chop these all up into pretty large chunks. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get all this into the batter. Let's just start cutting some dark chocolate. That's so satisfying, wow. This is like 20 chocolate bars, I believe. All right, I'm saving these two bars for decoration. So I'm going to mix this wonderful chocolate into the dough. Probably one of my favorite parts. It's like, like mixing a salad. Ooh, yeah. Oh, listen to that sound. You know what? I'm gonna use my hands. Oh, this feels so nice. Okay. I think that's mixed. Time to figure out how I'm gonna bake this guy. Let me go check in the back to see what we have. Okay, I found this uh, really big cake pan that we have in the Tasty Kitchen. I think this will be a perfect size. Got some parchment strips to keep it non-stick. I'm just gonna spray it just to be sure. Parchment sling technique. Go in there, have it in the pattern, almost like a clock. Okay, I think this pan is sufficiently lined. Now the gotta get all this batter out of there. Come on. Woo, nice. All right, let's get the rest of you. I'm gonna spread this out. I'm gonna use my hands. Let's get you situated. Just in case we didn't have enough chocolate, we're gonna put some more chocolate. I'm gonna go here, you know. Is there really such thing as too much chocolate? I don't think so. Two entire bars of chocolate just for the topping. This guy is ready for the oven. I am so happy with what we have right now. Woo wee. Let's put you in the oven, big guy. Wow, there's, this is cookies like at least 50% chocolate, which is a good thing because when I make cookies, I get to control how much chocolate goes in. All right, let's bake you for probably like an hour or two, 300, nice and low, to give the whole thing enough time to cook. Wow. 
Later, dude. Oh, oh boy, this is a this is a heavy one. Wow. So this is what the cookie looks like after one and a half hours of baking and a lot of resting time so it could slowly cool down. I'm really proud of this. And you know, you can't have a giant cookie without big milk. I'm also very excited because I have a friend named Lindsay who's baked cookies and really likes making cookies. So I think it'd be really fun to FaceTime her in to see what she thinks of this. Let's get Lindsay on the phone. What's up, Lindsay? Hi. How's it going? Good. I'm mad I'm not there to eat whatever you're making. I would have preferred if there were other people to share it with. Lindsay made a really cool video where she challenged a lot of tasty producers to bake things. And that was a really fun one because you've made so many things that video. And Lindsay also happened to make my cookies, which was really fun. I actually bake your cookies a lot for Jasmine because she's obsessed mm. with them. All right. Well, do you want to see it? I'm ready. Ready. One, two, three. Alvin, it's a cake. <laughs> Also, the milk! You made it so beautiful! Thanks. It's a 16 inch cake pan, the largest we could find at the store. This is a vase, I think. I guess that's the next step for me. I guess it's just to go bigger. That's right. Go big or go home. That's the motto of the show. All right. Well, thanks, Lindsay. I'll see you soon. All right. Good luck. All right. Bye. So it happens to be almost Christmas and milk and cookies are a family tradition, at least for me. Around that time, I leave them out for Santa. So I thought it would be fun to see if we can tempt Santa Claus to come in. Hopefully we get some never before seen footage of the ever elusive Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Oh, what is this? It seems to be a large cookie and milk. Usually when kids leave it out for me, it's not this big. Whoever made this must be a fine lad. I will bring him many presents. No one seems to be watching. I see no reason not to try. My oh my, this is quite the large cookie. Look at this texture. There's so much chocolate and cookie. I think I will have myself a bite. Usually everybody says, where is Santa? But no one asks, how is Santa? The biggest problem of having this beard is that I hard to put food in my mouth hole. Ho ho ho! Oh, there are crumbs in my beard. Mmm! Praise Rudolph, this is a good cookie. This may be the best cookie I've had in all my years. I think I shall take this cookie and hightail it back to the North Pole. Ho ho ho! Oh, sweet sugar plum, I'm out of here. Well, if you made it to this part of the video, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for supporting the show, supporting me, watching and enduring me do all my little shenanigans that I do throughout the show. Peace.